Gigapan Conversations – Diversity and Inclusion in the Community We are in Soweto, the biggest suburb of Johannesburg, home to half of the 8 million inhabitants of the South African business capital. The population here is exclusively black, people who were victims of racial segregation for 40 years. One of the great symbols of this fight is Hector Peterson, a 13-year-old schoolboy killed by police on June 16, 1976, as he took part in a demonstration against the obligatory teaching of Afrikaans, the language of the state-imposed segregation. That day, the police opened fire on the marchers and killed 23 people. Hector Peterson was the youngest victim. This place here, this memorial, is like dedicated to those kids who gave up their lives for us that, that day. Now we've got rights to learn in, in each other languages. If you are closer, you can learn in closer in English. Zulu, learn in Zulu in English. So they, their dream was fulfilled. Today, we wish they were here to see that all that hard work, all that, all that, all that, that pain that they felt is, not, is, is alive today. It's possible. They were preparing the future for us. Sanele and Asenda are already the students of tomorrow thanks to this futuristic tool called the GIGAPAN. This robot, developed with the collaboration of NASA to study Mars, takes panoramic views of the Earth automatically. Sanele and Ascender are two of the 1,200 students in the public school of Soweto, one of four schools in the world to be chosen by UNESCO IBE and Associated Schools Network and Carnegie Mellon University. Their mission, to test the GIGAPAN. Today their assignment is to make a report about their local area. It doesn't take them long to figure out how this new machine works. So what happens is like it's taking small pictures, small pictures. And, and then and, and the it, it comes into a giga pin when they stitch them and they become one big panorama. Back at the school, Sanele and Ascenda are eager to discover the results of their work. In this memory card are gigapans of Soweto, their personal vision of their area. A program assembles them and reconstitutes each panoramic picture in high definition, up to 600 million pixels. Thanks to the large zoom capacity, details become apparent which are invisible to the naked eye. Once the images are downloaded onto a special site, which can store up to 4,000 photos, the gigapans are sent to three partner schools throughout the world, one of which is in Pittsburgh in the United States. These images will be the starting point of an intercultural exchange. Here in Soweto, the children are learning how to use computers thanks to the introduction of the Gigapan, a tool which is helping to break down the digital divide and to create a worldwide social network to foster mutual understanding. This is a very exciting project and its potentials for education are really exciting because it allows students self-discovery, enables them to go through a panorama and zoom in into, into areas that they really like. So this is a self-discovery, a conversation with other students, and it can be implicated in, in various subjects. When the children are supposed to document the world with the GigaPan, suddenly they have to think, where are the places in Soweto that have historical significance? Where was the apartheid, anti-apartheid struggle happening? And when they go there physically and they use the GigaPan, with a new eye they're seeing a place that's very important historically and this causes them to do new research on the history of their very own culture and region. So the GigaPan becomes a catalyst to help them understand their place better and to communicate that idea to other people better. We're in downtown Johannesburg. This is called the Museum Africa of the business capital. Senele, Asenda and the other students from their school have been invited here. They have come to admire their own photographic work, printed out in large format. Their dialogues with other students from the Caribbean and the United States are also on show. Ila, the researcher from Carnegie Mellon, and Christopher from UNESCO have organized this Gigapan exhibition. We can see the Soweto Township and the homes of apartheid, but also the Regina Mundi Church, target of police operations during apartheid, and the shopping centre, a symbol of the economic development of Soweto. This is my word. <laughs> and even the kitchen in Ascender's family home. 
They cheat. <laughs> I wish my little cousin was here to see this. It's my aunt. That's my aunt. This is my aunt. I took it at home because my aunt prepared like um, this traditional food. I've benefited a lot from this project because even newspapers were writing about me because I was, I'm the cameraman of the school. I take the pictures for the school and everything. So I've had a, it's a, that this, the, the, the newspapers were writing uh, articles about me, which I could put, do, put on my CV. So I, it's also beauty boosting my, my, my confidence. You know. Yeah. Congratulations. A diploma for students who can use the Gigapan. At the moment, this robot is still in an experimental phase. But it is becoming a curricular innovation aimed at supporting learning processes on a global scale. It may be put to service to teach subjects such as history, geography or literature. A tool of peace throughout the world, because the objective of the Gigapan is to bring people together, so that they can learn to live together better. In 2010, Johannesburg will begin to unite people from all over the world in this stadium, the venue for the next World Cup. My teachers love me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good because um, I, pa I participate a lot, even like in the classroom. I'm like always my hand up and whatnot. So I think it's good in that sense. I think my teachers are my guidance to, you know, they are there to help me figure out who I am because I spend most of my time at school, like during school days and whatnot. So they basically like help me to figure out things and basically are there for guidance. So that's why it's important because if they were not there, then if they were like passive teachers who just sort of sit in the staff room and you know not be in the classroom, then I don't think I'd be the person I am. Big up to the teachers. <laughs> If ministers could like do programs which can improve our confidence, which can uh, increase our self-esteem, to, to live life to the fullest, to live life to be champions in life. I've never spoken to a minister. If I speak to a minister, I mean, my, my self-confidence will, will grow. If they can, if they can just, uh, if they can have, uh, like, be close to us, listen to our problems, Hear what you have to say, because there's a lot that you have to offer. Afin de faire progresser ce domaine, nous avons besoin des éléments suivants. Investir dans la formation et le développement professionnel des enseignants. Fournir un encouragement, un soutien et des ressources afin d'impliquer les écoles, les élèves et les enseignants. Mettre au point diverses stratégies d'apprentissage attentives aux besoins de chaque enfant.